Welcome back. In this session, we will look at the final topic, ethical issues in curation, intellectual property matters. We started this course by discussing what is curation, how is it different from aggregation, and why teachers need to become both creators of learning content as well as curators of learning resources. We then considered emerging trends in education that make curation an imperative in the context of education. Here we considered how the deluge of knowledge available online implies abundant information being available but of varying quality in terms of accuracy, trustworthiness and bias. And hence, need for learner facilitators to curate reliable and good quality learning resources. We also considered how the flipped classroom model allows teachers to enrich the learning experience by augmenting it with curated resources. Then we looked at the five step curation process in education. Beginning with step one, defining the learning objectives. Step two, determining the learner profile. Step three, finding appropriate learning resources using algorithmic, social, or personal filters as also open educational resources or OERs and massive open online courses or MOOCs. Step 4. Organizing the learning resources where we looked at DIGO and finally step 5. Adding context to the curated resources to make them more meaningful vis-a-vis -vis the learning objective and the learner profile and presenting them elegantly in an age-appropriate manner. In step 5, we also discussed why a learner facilitator need not stop at presenting elegantly but could also strive to create an online learning environment using the curated resources, where conversation and collaborative learning activities can be conducted so that the learners gain a deeper understanding of the topic of study. Why do we need to consider ethical issues while curating? Simply because we are dealing with intellectual property that has been created by others which we do not ourselves own. At the same time, curation is becoming imperative because knowledge and information is burgeoning. Curator Maria Popova describes curation as a new kind of authorship in a world of informational abundance. An author Clay Shirky says, curation comes when search stops working. While curation is becoming imperative, as a curator, we need to make sure that it does not degenerate into cheating. Simply, cut-pasting content is plagiarism. However, finding an appropriate knowledge nugget that will deepen learners' understanding of a topic of study and providing a link to it is value addition. Not only is it useful for the learners, most likely the content author will also welcome the publicity. What is important is adding a layer of context, which is what makes you a curator and elevates you from being just an aggregator. When you give a link to a resource you curate, you can also include some sample content from the original resource, as long as it is fair use and does not infringe copyright laws. You must also ensure proper attribution, just like you would do while quoting references in a research paper or while making the bibliography of a book. If you are curating content from other curators, you should consider using the curator's code. Give a hat tip to the curator from whom you got the link. To remember that some websites do not allow curation, respect their intellectual property. Many web resources are now offered under Creative Commons license. Under this copyright license, unlike the default all rights reserved, the author decides to keep some rights reserved and may give the right to share, use or even build upon a work. MIT OpenCourseWare or MIT OCW is one example of content under Creative Commons license. You can visit www.creativecommons.org 
slash education for links to other academic resources available under Creative Commons license. If you use Creative Commons content, you could also consider contributing to the CC repository by making content you create available under this license. In summary, from an ethical perspective, when you curate, you must make sure that you are not plagiarizing and you are not just aggregating learning resources. Instead, you should ensure that you are adding a layer of meaning to the curated resources so that you make them more contextual for your learners and enhance their learning experience. You must also attribute the curated resources properly, including acknowledging other curators if you have used their work. The gist of ethics in curation is that you should respect other people's intellectual property rights and add value to their work when you curate their resources.